This is the Pixel 6a. Now, a full disclaimer, this was sent to me by Team Pixel. Now, when they sent this to me, there was no promise of coverage or even positive opinions, and they're not even watching this video ahead of time. They're watching this video as soon as this video goes up, if they're even watching it at all. So for the past few years, Google has always made the A variant of their Pixel device. And every single year, my opinion doesn't change. This is the best camera you can buy on an affordable device, and it's a solid phone too. Now, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of more premium phones, but it has some of the features that most people want, like good battery life and a great camera, and also Google's software. When people ask me what phone should they get, I always ask the question, what's most important to them? Do they wanna have the most premium phone, or do they wanna have a good phone with an amazing camera? If that is the answer, I always point them to the Pixel A series. This year might be a little bit different because there's some stiff competition out there. The Samsung A series is really good and OnePlus has been pumping out these Nord devices too at an extremely affordable price and they've gotten so much better. So is the Pixel 6a still worth it? Well, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. That was a super long intro and let's dive into it. Let's start with the basics. This phone is 449 and if you pre-order the phone, you get a free pair of the Pixel Buds A, which I heard are pretty good. Now, with that being said though, there's actually no headphone jack on this phone. The 5A, the 4A, the 3A all had headphone jacks. No longer there's a headphone jack on this phone, so the Pixel Buds is something you should consider getting. In the hand, the Pixel 6A feels like a great phone. When comparing it to the Pixel 6 Pro, there's a lot of similar elements between the two, from the placements to the buttons to the camera bar on the back. I don't think this phone is very slippery to hold like some glass phones are. For less than 20 bucks, you can customize the way this phone looks. If you don't like the colors that are provided, get your own colors, get your own styles, and even this turtle one is pretty cool. The purple Ninja Turtle was always my favorite Ninja Turtle because he liked to do stuff with tech and that is kind of what made me love technology. So, of course, I'll be getting one of those skins once they're available. Hit the links down below to pick yourself up a dbrand skin for your Pixel 6 or any other phone you may have. But beyond that, the back of the phone looks like kind of a run-of-the-mill device. Now, this phone is a little bit thicker. Like, it doesn't feel like thick to the point where uh, it's a problem or thick to the point where it's uncomfortable, but it is a little bit thicker compared to the phones I have been using lately. Now, the thickness does help it shove this battery in here. It is a 4410 milliamp battery, and with this battery, you can get some pretty good battery life, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Now, to talk about specs a little bit further, this has 128 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. It's a 1080p display, and it's 60 hertz, and this camera cluster on the back, this is gonna be a dual 12 megapixel camera that has wide, and ultra wide focal lengths. Back to the front, there's this single camera right here and this is eight megapixels. And this phone does have a set of dual speakers and I think they sound pretty decent. There's also a fingerprint scanner on the screen and I think it works pretty good. No problems here. Let's talk about my experience using the phone as my main phone for a number of days. This is a solid day-to-day -day phone and the battery can last throughout the whole day if I'm doing normal tasks. Now when I say normal task, I mean just my daily usage of the phone. So like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Milanode and uh, listening to music, watching videos and listening to podcasts, those type of things, this phone is just fine. But when I do things like you know, let's say I wanna start do some gaming or let's say I want to start editing video and render those things out. That's when the battery starts to take a hit and I start to lose battery a little bit faster than I would hope for. But for people buying this phone and in this budget sector, they're not gonna be doing things like this. So majority of people that buys this phone, they will be able to experience that full day's worth of battery life. When I do use my phone, I get around four and a half hours of screen on time in a normal day for me, and that is good enough. Um, I take it off the charger around 6 a.m., and by 11 p.m. or so, it kind of gives me that warning that it has low battery, and I can put in low power mode from there, but for the most part, I'm heading to bed anyway, so it works out great for me. With this being sort of a budget device, 
a lot of people may have concerns with it being laggy or things like that. I can assure you over my time using this phone, I have not experienced any sort of lag. Uh, if you're coming from a 120 hertz display, then you could say it may feel a little bit laggier, which I totally get. But from a standpoint of most people using this phone, they're not gonna experience any sort of lag like that at all. I mean, as you can see, I'm scrolling through apps, I'm opening new apps, I'm bouncing between apps, and doing all these things right here without a problem at all. This device is extremely snappy. Even if you wanna do light gaming, this phone is perfectly fine. I mean, I've been playing a couple games on here, like Call of Duty, Asphalt 9, um, Among Us. Uh, what else have I been playing? Um, Gumslinger, I mean, I've been playing quite a bit on here just to kind of test it out and I haven't ran into like any type of crazy shuddering or anything like that. And also in my experience, the Tensor chip doesn't get that hot either. So if you're worrying about like it overheating or things like that, that some chips do, I have not had a problem at all with this phone overheating when it comes to games. So this phone does come with Android 12 and obviously it's gonna be upgraded to Android 13 when it comes out in the fall. But I will say Android 12 looks really good on this device. I love the new bold approach that Android 12 is taking. I love the new widgets. I think the new widgets look really great. I like how everything is rounded out. I like that style. I mean, even the menus have like a really nice look to it. It has this kind of like over bounce when you scroll too far. It has a lot of these visual elements that Android has been missing for a long time. These are now baked into the OS and I think it's great on this phone. So this phone does have exclusive things that other non-Pixel devices has. And this is a couple of things that makes these phones like better in my opinion than most other Android phones. So for example, I can't show this one right now, but if someone's calling me, I can screen the phone call ahead of time and then it makes them tell me who they are before I answer the phone. That's one great feature. Or if I'm calling a business, my phone could actually wait on hold for me and when they pick it up, it would then notify me and then I could pick up my phone. Those are a couple cool features. But one thing that I like a lot is the dictation. I think dictation is fantastic on this phone. It works really great. I am actually surprised how well it works. It puts in punctuation and it does a great job with the way I speak. I've been using dictation for a very long time and I've never had an issue with it on a Pixel device. And I love using dictation in general just because when I'm driving, I should not be looking at my phone and typing. I should just be able to hold a conversation and this thing will pick it up every single time. The iPhone cannot compare to that. Samsung cannot compare to that. That is one thing that is very big to me. And then we have Magic Eraser as well. Magic Eraser allows you to remove different objects or elements in a photo. Um, that is kind of a pretty cool way to edit a photo. If something's in a photo that you don't like, you just go ahead and go to Magic Eraser and take it out. So as you can see here, I'm just literally drawing over elements in the photo that I do not want in the photo at all. Another feature that I like a lot is called focus mode. And what focus mode is, it's a way to block distracting apps between a certain time or when you trigger focus mode on. So let me show you how it works. Uh, we'll come into our setting and we'll turn on focus mode. And focus mode will pause distracting applications. So I set it up for Gmail, Twitter, and a couple other apps too. So as you can see right here, Gmail is now grayed out. When I try to click on Gmail, it tells me that focus mode is out and I cannot get to it or I can toggle it on for five minutes. But what's nice about it is that it blocks notifications too. So if I wanna work on something, I could turn on focus mode and then I cannot get back into these apps that are important to me. Like Discord and Duolingo, I would no longer get notifications when focus mode is turned on. That is a feature that I like to use a whole bunch um, just because you know I use my phone for everything and I need to be productive sometimes so I can pop on focus mode and not allow those apps to access me during that time. Okay, so let's talk about the cameras here on the Pixel. That is what the Pixel is known for. So is the camera any better? The answer is no. The camera is not better, but that is okay. That is a good thing. The Pixel has one of the best cameras I have ever used on any sort of phone ever. And when it comes to like portrait shots, I think the Pixel takes better phones than any other phone that's available out there. My wife has a Pixel 5. That is her main phone. And we go places and take pictures of my kid. I prefer her photos on her Pixel 5 more than photos that I take with an S22 or an iPhone on her Pixel 5. So. Yeah, there, there's a lot to be said about Pixel's cameras. Now, 
I will say the images look really dynamic and it has that punchy pixel look to every shot. The image is sharp even with the ultra wide lens and you know, day in and day out, I love using a pixel camera to take a picture of everything. Now I would say it's not the most flexible camera systems out there. A lot of cameras now can do a 2x zoom, a, a 5x zoom, and some can do a 100x zoom. And this doesn't have that, but what it does have is awesome, awesome photos in the long run, especially portrait mode. When you pop into portrait, take a photo, it looks really good. As for video, it's a pixel. So once again, video mode is not great on this phone. They are a far behind when it comes to the iPhone and also far behind when it comes to Samsung as well. But overall, as far as still shots, yeah, I'll take a pixel any day. So is this phone still the default recommendation for people when they ask me, Kevin, what phone should I buy? For those people who are not looking for a very spec heavy phone, and they're looking for a phone that can run the apps, good battery life, and an awesome camera, then the Pixel 6a is gonna be the choice. The Pixel 6a is my choice for people in those scenarios. But if someone comes to me and say, Kevin, you know what? Camera's not that important. I want a power heavy phone. I want a spec heavy phone. I wanna play games. I wanna do all these things on this phone and I wanna do it the best way possible. Then I think Samsung has them nudged out in that category. But overall, those are my opinions. I wanna know what yours are. Sound off down below. Kevin the Tech Ninja here. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys later.